Rolling. studio it's safe it's sweet tea we're spitballing giving you the people what you want t how's arizona treating you uh, <laughs> so i feel like i've made no progress with the woman of moab i've i mean we're doing well with this right we're cranking out podcasts left and right. We're we've got shirts now. I'm excited about all that. Abortion but, episode was good. Yeah. Oh, and the birth <laughs> control one as well. I thought I enjoyed the birth control one thoroughly. I uh, I enjoy the weather. It's finally cooling off a little bit. For the record, it is September 24th. It's a Friday. <laughs> Cream pie Friday. Ain't got no job. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm working. I'm working, but. It's no, we, we went out. We, we worked early in the morning. Yeah, it's just different. We it's, hit the dog park. We, we got attacked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was that other dog, Cody. Yeah, very protective. But Saki, she just goes in. She just, so she goes after this. What was it? It was a Doberman Rottweiler. And she just Confirmed. went in. She went <laughs> in and she got tossed. And she, she was down on her back and she was still fighting. And it's just like, honey. Honey, you just got to know when to quit. At least Frank was. Frank knew. Frank knew right right from the get go that this dog was not fucking around, and that he needed to just take a seat off to the side, buddy. Isn't it funny how dogs are a lot like their owners? <laughs> I I see. If I was in Frank's situation, though, somebody came at me like that other dog did, we'd be fight. I'd be fighting like Saki would. No, I think it's a good sign though that Frank showed restraint. <laughs> Well, it's probably less encouraging than my. <laughs> if you should be asking me how I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. 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 <laughs> well, the, well, Dick mentioned in the last, last episode that we've already seen your dog. So we, we, already, we already know about you. I, uh, yeah. So it's nice being here. It's, it's made a lot of this easier. It's definitely a breath of fresh air. Everything's a little bit more expensive except for gas, which is funny. But three dollars, yeah, pretty consistent. But I think there's a lot that we need to take a look at, I guess, inwardly, outwardly, ask ourselves some questions, do some reflection. And I think that's what we want to get into a little bit with this episode. Is are we going to dig deep? Well, <laughs> I wanted to talk about perception hmm. but i know you wanted to talk about some, I know some other things yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> like my thing was perception is so like i feel like people look at me and they still see somebody that's like 24 years old and isn't grown up and doesn't have their act together and because we say like yeah and i wear <laughs> tank tops and i listen to loud music machine gun kelly specifically oh, lots of machine gun kelly We'll get more into that later, right? No, why we could just get into it. <laughs> we're, we're, well, we're I mean, in. it's part we're of the in. it's part of the larger discussion, right? So, perception wise, somebody that hasn't listened to this music or doesn't like that type of music listens to it, and here's vulgarity, and here's negativity, and here's just somebody that's angry. Whereas I listen to this music, and I'm very fueled and motivated by it. So, but somebody from the outside looking in just sees somebody that's just angry, and then. We For people who don't know, would you describe it as rock rap? Well, no. I mean, some of it. Some of it, he's got some songs that are obviously is late. The stuff that he's doing lately mm -hmm. is more rock stuff, like pop punk stuff, you know. But his older stuff is rap. There's some songs that are a little bit of a blend. Okay. I haven't. I don't know if I've played many of those for you, but I think that matters for perception. Yeah, and this this music is now associated with negativity 
Right. Someone asked me a deeper question. Is rap positive? Well, yeah, I mean, for me, it depends on how you use it, right? So this is how I wanted to talk is how people digest music and how it's a reflection of what their motivations or intentions are. Like your feedback loop. So that's what you were saying earlier. That was the the little term that you use. And so I see this music, I think you described it maybe as, as, as hard as opposed to softer, kinder music. And I like that edge because it makes me feel like I'm competing against myself, basically. I have to best myself and continue just trusting in myself. And I have to take this me against the world mentality because the world's not dishing anybody any favors. So why the fuck am I going to trust the world? Fuck the world. I got to trust myself. And that's the mentality here. And that's 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 yelled in one of his songs. It's fuck the world, fuck the world. He's probably taking that from... Notorious big ready to die album featuring Method Man. Fuck the world. Don't ask me for shit. See? And everything you get, you got to work hard for it. There you go. It's the same thing. Honey, shake your hips. Right? <laughs> you don't stop. <laughs> so how's that any different? It is for me, people hate me for saying this. Everything is contextual. And I, I think context matters. And intent matters. Right. And I I there's plenty of Machine Gun Kelly songs that are that are more vulgar that I don't like, right? There's some that are just basically about like in taking pills and stuff like that. Like there's there's ones like that that I I don't like, you mm -hmm. know. So there's there are dynamics of it that I can see that people can use it and throw it in your face and say, "What about this?" And it's just like, okay, well maybe I don't like that song. <laughs> I don't, you know. Mm -hmm. So each individual is different too. It isn't. I'm. I'm seeing Machine Gun Kelly, and I'm. I view him in a different lens. I view him as a. He's a marketing tool, right? He's a. He's a. A lot of these entertainers are right. Of course, right. That's what we're we're doing. We're. You know, we're, we're. Are we market viable? Someone would look at us and try to determine. These are the questions I remember. If you were in the grocery store, what aisle would you be in? Mm -hmm. I remember we asked that question, right? And yeah. so we're marketing ourselves. This is the Catch the Sky podcast. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, or YouTube, or anywhere you listen to podcasts by searching for the Catch the Sky podcast, or on Twitter at CTS Terry or at CTS Safe. If you want to invest in this once in a lifetime endeavor, <laughs> <laughs> you know where we're at. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, a lot of it is 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 perception and how you're you're marketing yourself, right? And I think he, at this point, sees himself as an entertainer. So that's why he doesn't give a fuck if he's a rapper or mm -hmm. somebody that plays rock or whatever. He doesn't give a shit. Mm -hmm. He's just looking at his bank account grow. I feel like we're all doing that. We're well, shouldn't we all? To, is that, and that's what, is this the, I'm a socialist. So I don't know. I don't believe it is. I, I, I think there's, it's to be good. It's to do good. I think it's to spread the the good. Mm -hmm. well, this fight for money and resources seems to seems to have gotten us to a lot of the places that we don't really care about, but we're forced to because we recognize that additional finances could go support our not for profit causes. You know, we could support Homeward Bound. Uh, we could Great support, film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> valley big brothers and sisters <laughs> hands across america yeah and a lot of these are we, we just talked about how much dolly parton does the other day mm -hmm. right but it's this but it, it, it's that is the paradigm that you just have to get rich to support good you don't but you could also be motivating good through what you do, right? So his music motivates me to do more. And so now that I have done more with my life, I now have more resources to contribute to the society, right? That's that seems to be the the system we're in. I don't I'm struggling. I can't break this whole system. Like this this matrix is going to keep on going, right? What where do I fit into all this? And New matrix can... film drops the 21st. <laughs> Or no, no, no. Sorry, yeah. sorry. The 22nd. It is 12 22 21. 
because that's a reflection. Yes. <laughs> so I guess you get what what is the purpose of this life? There is no purpose. So I knew that you were going to ask that at some point, and that's the. I, I was already ready with the answer, and that's the answer that people don't want to hear, but there's no purpose. There's absolutely zero purpose. We want there to be a purpose because we're intellectual beings, and we have to have a purpose. Just like when we go through a breakup, we have to have an answer. We have to have an explanation. We, need, we there, there needs to be an answer to that why. Why are we here? There, there isn't a why are we here. And maybe collectively as a species, yes, why are we here? Why are we here maybe to to travel the stars and populate those planets and, you know, populate the galaxy population. <laughs> People better control their, their kids. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on an individual level, there's not a purpose, right? We can't sit there and, and say that we're, we're going to, Jesus, they're here, they're here. <laughs> that, are those the 10 frozen pizzas you ordered? <laughs> but, and I mean, Stacked. So, <laughs> also, you can't even get in the freezer right now. <laughs> it's a mountain of frozen pizza. Sorry. <laughs> it's like an igloo in there. Yeah. <laughs> but, and, and so other people can also flip that conversation around, though, and say, no. I'm going to be the next president and I'm going to be the next Abraham Lincoln. And I'm going to, you know, because obviously Abraham Lincoln had a pretty significant impact on this world. Right. Are we here to talk about Abraham Lincoln. Cause I got some shit to say, <laughs> <laughs> but if he hadn't done it, somebody else would have. It, the, the momentum was leaning in this direction. This was an ongoing dispute between the North and the South. that seemed to divide geographically. If he hadn't done it, Regarding somebody the role of government, have. regarding tariffs, re regarding the role of government. So if he hadn't done it, somebody else would have, right? It was, it was almost inevitable, you know, because it just so happened to be the catalyst. But Andrew Jackson, who I spent some time with in Nashville, Tennessee, a few weeks ago, showed me and taught me that John C. Calhoun, who was then senator for South Carolina, but also vice president under Jackson, sought to overtake and ensure the rights of people to, to own slaves and to be free from tariffs from the government. So there were, there were two, two things there and those kind of went hand in hand because that's commerce, right? And this is getting back to, to capital. So yes, Abraham, but Abraham Lincoln's the guy that we put on a platform. We, and then we negate the entire history that, and the context of history that runs up to that moment. Abraham Lincoln is is in a moment, right? And so everybody gets their moment. Whether that moment lasts forever, how do you get remembered? Because if you think about the 1800s, how many people are remembered? And then go on further. How do you etch yourself in immortality? Or, <laughs> or are you okay with being an obscure, being someone who helped build the railroad? So it's funny because... Maybe somebody that helped lay the railroad for Machine Gun Kelly said mm -hmm. something similar to right. what you just said. Right. You only get one shot, one opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> you capture it, just let it slip. His arm, wait. <laughs> His arms you are let heavy. it slip. You let it slip. You're like me at karaoke a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Speaking of karaoke, we doing karaoke tonight? We should. I, yeah, dude, I was fucking. If you want a good pregame for that concert, you get me lit up at karaoke and then take me out there. You're going to have yourself a night. <laughs> you, if you just want a night of pure entertainment, you take me to that shit and run it back. Yeah. <laughs> Here's my only thing is that. I'm I'm comfortable doing all that. I just I want to sleep at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that would be fantastic. But also very pivotal soccer match tomorrow. Chelsea plays Man City and sports gambling is legal and I have become an addict and I can't wait. <laughs> it's been <laughs> two weeks. <laughs> Three weeks. <laughs> I'm all I'm all in. I'm all hooked. The math doesn't make sense. I don't I don't quite get it. There's probably some fees involved. But you lose. Yeah, yeah. That's the bottom line is they're allowing me to do this. 
and I'm appreciative of their service. And I'll soon start bickering with people as far as like how much of a percentage they're actually taking. Right. And that's what it's coming down to is that by me agreeing to this, I'm entering into a legal contract. And so what is, I guess, what does it all mean? Where, what is the bloody purpose of any and all of this? And I just note that I have particular behaviors and traits that I exhibit, especially in moments of failure where the thing that keeps motivating me, the thing that keeps pushing me is to just improve. And so like some aspects, if sugar's around me, like I might dive in and, and snarf it up like a pig <laughs> and just get into the sugar coma. Or sometimes I'll just, it'll be like a, a non ending loop of, of streaming shows on some platform where it's just like one episode after another, it's like an addiction or just drinking too much. Honestly, where it's just like, why did I add this extra shot into my body or just not slowing down? I think haste makes waste. I know that I should take some time and breathe. Actually, we should all take some time and breathe. And I feel like I did a little bit the other day. I feel like I definitely slowed down, chose a little bit more peace in my life and let go of some of this frustration. And then today I burned a hole in my shorts. <laughs> <laughs> so life lesson is probably stop smoking and that won't happen, right? Well, have we really got into why you smoke blunts specifically? Yeah. Well, not on here. But Please. it's multifaceted. So one reason would be because you can burn the evidence. There's nothing on you. It's gone. Easily disposable. But two, in addition to the convenience, you can just take it around with you, right? It's it's easy to just pull one out and then boom, it's there. You don't have to be lighting up a piece or anything like that. And the other side, I guess, is I do enjoy it. Like I do enjoy the, the additional flavor, right? But there's that part of me that is just like, if, if I'm going to go out sooner or whatever, then I'd rather do it in a manner that I'm enjoying because I tried to choose that sooner in life and people weren't too thrilled about the manner I chose and going about then. So at least this way, you know, if something happens or the predictable happens, I develop cancer or something and then, oh no, he got cancer. It's like, all right, well, but I also knew that this was going to happen. So it's also a way of just getting out of here earlier, but also enjoying the ride. I remember the joy and the satisfaction that I got out of smoking blunts because to me, it was an iconic image of 90s hip hop. <laughs> I mean, I do enjoy it. So, I mean, there is that, but there's like that also a part of me that like embraces the health risks mm -hmm. or the side effects, because I'm just like, if that's the, if that's the worst that's going to happen is you're going to kill me. Yeah. Seriously. That's the, like, I, so I don't want, I, I guess the way I phrased that before sounded negative, but like what the worst you can do is kill me. Like you think that I fear death. Because you already know that life's purpose is, it's meaningless. I mean, we can go ahead and we can contribute great things, but at the end, we're going to die. And, and what? we're all going to die, right? Yeah. <laughs> we're, we're, we're all going to die at some point. Hey, that's facts. And like we said, like our legacy, it's, it's, it's how much do we push that wheel while we're here? Right? So the wheel's always spinning, right? The world's always turning, but how much, how much of an impact do we have over here? How much do we, do we spin it? It's going to keep spinning after we're gone. And what the hell are we doing here? So it's going to slow down at times. It's going to speed up at times. And that's due to the people that are on this earth and their contributions, but movements and everything take groups of people. No one person does anything. Donald Trump didn't get elected on his own. He didn't cast millions of votes for himself, right? Other people put him in power. Mm-hmm. Everything is, is, it's a movement. Machine Gun Kelly's movement. 
And we're a reflection of the culture. So we're part of the movement too. Exactly. Everybody's influenced by something previous, right? I guess I'd like to believe that if you're actually listening to these words, they could potentially influence you. I'm hoping positively. Right. But we've been influenced by somebody else previously. I always try. I always look for the good in, in that information. Oh yeah. I always look for the best in people. I try to even Trump. Yeah. I forgave Bush. Still unforgivable in a lot of aspects, but I heard his argument. I heard his story. I heard his 9-11 speech and he really struggled at times. <laughs> when when he delivered it on the radio, like if you heard it on the radio, it was absolute gold. But when you watch it in person, yeah. it was awful. He, yeah. But it, that wasn't a moment to be folksy. You know, he had charm, but he had to take on this very stern demeanor moving forward. Yeah. And everybody bought into it. And then they became really suspicious of brown people. And you started calling every politician a secret Muslim and fake that they faked their birth certificates, just like you did with Barack <laughs> and now Kamala. And you're continuing to pander to the xenophobic and the worst instinctual fears because you've created this notion that these people are harmful to your way of life and that you're not going to keep your heritage or your traditions alive. So <laughs> it's great that you're bringing up this point because there was a point I made in our original demo episode. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if anybody actually, there's, there's probably maybe like three people in the entire world that ever even listened to that original, original, original one, because mm -hmm. it's obviously been edited several times over. Right. But I don't know if you remember, there was one time where I was talking about interracial couples okay, and that fear that they don't want, you know, somebody of a different race getting their, their white daughter pregnant. Right. Some don't. And so some are ex maybe they're just, they just explicitly don't want black men. Right. So see, yeah. And so there was a, and you people, my, my, you know who you are. My yeah, my my the compare the, the comparison I made wasn't wasn't great, but it was. It's in their eyes they see this these people as this other, and they don't want it. They they could not they that's not tolerable, right? Mm -hmm. And we can't have that. And so it's just interesting that this notion is still perpetuating here in our seventy whatever episode, and we're still saying things that you know we've been saying the entire time. Is that just people are always fearful of the other? And how do we, why is that the case? What is this perception? Why is that? Why is it a negative perception that a black man might impregnate your white daughter? Like the whole world is trending in that mixed direction anyway. Like this whole, like all of us, this separation of races and everything. I feel like that's also kind of what's behind this whole nationalist movement that's sure. been going on lately, because now people are seeing that, oh God, we have globalization now. Now everybody can travel around and all these cultures are blending together. We're going to lose our heritage and what makes us unique. And it's just like, bitch, fucking get with the times, evolve, adapt, and fucking Go to the next star already. Quit fucking around with fucking reality TV and sh fucking coal mines and all this other bullshit. And let's just take the next step. We have the technology. We talked about this just the other day off air. Why aren't we recycling shit? Because it's not, it's, it's not cost efficient. Well, fuck that. I'm sick of cost efficiency. It's time to just fucking step up and, and do what we're capable of as a species instead of fucking around. We're firing off fucking billionaires into, into space. Jeff Bezos is literally Dr. Evil. He's riding a giant penis shaped cock. Like what the fuck? Like <laughs> Seriously. Number one, I liked when the mob controlled recycling. I thought they ran it much better than the companies currently. Cause we're not recycling anything. Especially Republic services. Like we don't even have a trash <laughs> rocket. We don't even have anything. Like we've all, we're, we're watching all these billionaires shoot up into space and we can't send trash into the sun. <laughs> fucking serious it just doesn't seem fe I just maybe we should just make 
a lot less plastic, would that be that would be helpful? That'd be a start because that's what's it's crazy because like it's it's almost like the world was still spinning before plastic. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Isn't that cray? But think about plastic and how it's changed your life. I think I have plastic inside my body in the form of Kevlar keeping my hip together. Probably. So there's some good in plastic, right? But not individually wrapped straws, individually wrapped silverware, individually. I mean, wrapped is it good in your body? Straws. Are you sure that that's good? <laughs> or the are the cells <laughs> that are interacting? Because like it, it let, let, let me let me put it to you like this. We just like stick stem cells in, right? And and they interact with the cells in our body mm-hmm. and they copy it, right? Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying that plastic is stem cells by any means. But but the the idea being that the cells in your body interact with the cells in their surrounding areas, right? Do you want the cells on the inside of you interacting with plastic? I feel like a tumor is bound to develop at some point. Especially if you work in a plastic factory. I feel like you're you're done. And by the way, but here you are you just bragging about, about how you have a fucking <laughs> plastic. You're like I have Lego. I mean it's I I didn't get an opportunity to request titanium alloy and <laughs> just put me together like the the six million dollar man <laughs> it was it was a decision i don't regret because i think we'll we'll get into i i'm a i'm almost willing to be part of the ongoing experiment that is life right and so i guess the purpose is to get better for me and anything i can do to help improve and, and make it easier for people behind me i'm gonna do that's the goal. That's the intent. Uh, I mean, we had a we had a negative dog incident at the park today, but I, I kept it cool and I kept it positive. There's no reason to to fret or or get into situations. I think it's just learn from stupid behavior and move on. Yeah, but it's but we're getting to your whole your point. Even though we see MGK or blunts as positive, people have a negative perception because of the correlation between rap music and culture. And they're worried that once the kid starts listening to rap, it's a one way ticket to a black guy having a kid with my daughter. And they're, they're worried about that. Our neighbor across the street is worried about that. He told this to me. (laughs) (laughs) He said, he's worried that his daughter's becoming too black and he's a white male. Yeah. And he shared that openly with me, which I thought was interesting. Right. Because I look like. Yeah, you're not I exactly. Did. Yeah. <laughs> you're not exactly me. But I appreciated it. I appreciated his honesty. Right. And so he, he was willing. He was vulnerable as a parent to share some fears. And, and those fears, right or wrong, are, are somewhere. Somewhere in his being. You know, so there's something in his belief system, his value system, that makes him feel the way he does. See. And that's, it's just like, I don't understand why that is because in a world where we recognize that we're trending in the direction of more equality, or at least should be, I want my kid to be more black, quote unquote. I want my kid to be more Asian. I want my kid to be more, maybe not more white if they're white, you know, if they're, mm-hmm. you know, if, if you're born white, then maybe the know, good parts, maybe but, not so but, much but, the negative parts, right? Like, like <laughs> I take the positive in everybody. So I had somebody tell me once, I won't uh, disclose any races here or anything like that, but told me that I was, that I was hood. And I was like, you know, could you explain more what that means? And they're like, you just, you get in wherever, like you fit in with whoever's around you. Like you'll just fit in where you, wherever you're at. Get in where you fit in kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Like no matter where I'm at, I could be with a bunch of black people. I could be with a bunch of Asian people. Like, and if I'm the only white guy, well then, get, you know, fuck it. I'm the white guy. I'm the odd one out. So it's like make friends or be consumed. And just with all this uh, Gabby Petito shit that's gone down. <laughs> there was one, there was one meme that I saw shared. I guess it's not a meme, but more of a news story of What's a black difference? woman that was at like just a like sleepover party like with a bunch of her white friends and so like i don't know if you've seen this but there was like this last photo and it's like eight white women and this one black woman 
and then she like went missing and I don't think they ever solved it. Are we becoming a true crime podcast? <laughs> <laughs> this is our that second, just- this is our second <laughs> reference, <laughs> but, but in that, dun, dun, dun. Yeah. <laughs> in that instance, like every, every black person that looks at it, they're like, we know what happened. And there is something, it's this weird tribal mentality that can take place. My father had a similar mentality, only he applied it to the French and the British. And he told me never to trust them. (laughs) They're pissed about these submarines. So I have to imagine that again, that people keep pandering this information from one generation to the next. It's coming from somewhere. So parents, don't tell your kids racist shit, please. That's what I'm saying. Like, just let them. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's, that's basically but, it. But the culture embodies it, too. Like, um, um, we're put a mirror on us. We're a reflection of that. This is who we are. Make no mistake. And so that's where I know what I am. I know what I've been through. I know that I have made poor choices as well. And so have those poor choices been reinforced through this feedback loop? Have I made decisions out of anger because I'm listening to this angry music? Or is it just because I've had tons of concussions and emotional trauma in my life and all I want is to not feel so alone? So that's why that that it's all come in full circle. That's why that one moment in the office episode when they're talking about grief mm-hmm. and Michael is talking about how he feels and he's, he's yelling and, and nobody can hear him. And he just feels so terribly, terribly alone. And like they pan over to Pam and she like is really struck by it. And I think that's my biggest thing in life is I'm just tired of feeling so alone. Like from where I'm standing, you got to look at it from this perspective. My parents clearly were not prepared to have me. We're very excited and prepared to have my sister. And so when she came into our lives, there was just a complete focus on her. And I just took a backseat at that point. And so for me, all I want in this life is to feel like I'm part of a family, like seriously. And if that means having my own at this point, like that's fine, but I don't feel like I've ever actually fit in. And of course, like I have my aunts, my uncles, my grandma, like I love them all. They love me very much. And I've probably given them more grief than they deserve at times, but I have never felt like I've been able to actually fit in anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, everybody should always feel like, oh, you can always come home. And I know that there's people that have way, have it way worse than me, but I'm just, this is my experience. And I know that there's a lot of people that share those similar experiences, not being able to get along with their hands off. Like me and my mom just don't talk at all. Like that's not healthy. I would like to fix that, but I can't at the same time feel comfortable being around somebody that is so, so hypocritical and like she preached at me for accountability and tries to be this, you know, peaceful Catholic. But then when I tossed it in her face that maybe she should have used a condom if she didn't want to have kids, she literally like tried to attack me. And this is when I was like 24, 25 years old. Like she tried to like, she had a break and then she disappeared for mm-hmm. a week. Mm-hmm. Like that's not normal behavior. Like I, so how do you fit in with that? How do you tolerate this? Like, you know, you just, you just got to take a step away at my point, but that's fine. And the problem here is that I have not found anywhere to fit in. So like with this most recent experience with the woman of Moab, somebody had mentioned maybe you dodged a bullet well i'm tired of dodging bullets. like what am i supposed to do just dodge bullets until i'm dead and that's what i'm saying so now if you take this and circle it all the way back around to what i said earlier like okay i'm gonna enjoy myself and maybe die earlier right now my life is trending that i'm going to keep dodging bullets for the rest of my life i'd like that to change i'm trying to change that i've moved out here and and done things and put myself in a position to make myself available to people so that perhaps that would change. And it didn't. So I I'm putting in the effort and it just doesn't seem to work out. And so if that's going to be my life is constantly alone, why would I want to sit here and live until 120? Why would I want to go through that much 
Because guess what? If I live that long, I'm going to have to watch my friends die. I'm going to have to watch more of my family die. I'm going to have to watch more pets die. I'm just going to have to feel more, more, more loss without ever feeling any sense of wholeness. And as I previously mentioned, I have a history of head injuries and could very well end up developing Alzheimer's, dementia, or losing my memory well, well before my physical body starts to fail me. So having to go through something like that alone is is pretty terrifying in and of itself because I've seen how it impacts families into I, I just don't even know what I would do in that situation because my mind would quite literally be failing me and I wouldn't have anybody to, to help me through it. So why would I want to do that? So if life in and of itself doesn't have great meaning, why would I want to sit here and just lose the things that I do have forever if I'm just going to be alone the whole time? So... I hope that makes sense in some way. Would you rather watch a really long shitty movie or a short shitty movie? (laughs) 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 T, you said something there. And it was good. And I want to thank you. You know you're loved, number one, at least by me. Thank you. <laughs> I love you as well. That was no, that was awkward. That. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna come in with some more thoughts, but uh, no, no, go for it. I know I, I knew there was more. <laughs> go on. I was no. just bridging the gap there while you collected yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I think in order to survive, you have to learn to live with regrets, and I think you're. I see that as an embodiment to what you just said, how you described yourself. And I think you recognize that there are going to be regrets, but all you can do is keep going because otherwise if you consume yourself with it too much, it'll eat away at you. It'll denigrate you. It'll, it'll, it'll just keep fostering the same shitty behavior. And sometimes environment doesn't, you're, you're where you are. That environment changes. I think changing your venue, moving out here, I think gives you uh, an entirely different perspective, perception, and a breath of fresh air, right? Well, and that's the biggest thing too. Yeah. So in my most recent experience, I was told that lately I've been angry or stressed or whatever. Yeah. Because again, I'm doing a lot of this alone. Like I'm, I'm, I'm fixing up my house and I'm trying to sell it. And I, I did all this in... I think I put my house up for sale in like July or August, July, whatever. Yeah, July. And I mean, I'm out here by the 1st of September. It's ridiculous. Like, so the amount of effort that went in to pull that all off and then, you know, continue making money and feeding all the animals and keeping that massive house clean and this, that, and the other, it's just a lot. And I don't have anybody else to help me with it. And so, yeah, it is adding up. I do recognize it's stressed. And I was hoping that in this circumstance that there would be a little bit more patience and understanding that I am just literally in in my mind, this is how I'm perceiving it is like, yes, I'm stressed out. I'm probably stressing out the people around me more so than I care to, but I'm just trying to get out of here, get to that breath of fresh air and then just like stop and breathe, right? So just stop. And, and breathe but once i got here before i could even breathe i got punched in the gut and so that just made things yeah, a little lungs, bit worse your, one of your lungs collapsed yeah <laughs> so basically yeah i, I was I got already some feedback actually from other listeners i was pretty that. i was yeah i was somewhat <laughs> stressed about my whole situation in general and just getting here the, to have that happen it was just it, it was a lot and so i wasn't necessarily in my normal what i would describe as my normal quote-unquote mindset where I would be a little bit maybe more patient and calm in how I react. And so I guess my what I've learned from this is that I need to give myself more time after going through a stressful experience like this before exposing myself to anybody. 
to do you. Yeah, like I literally need to take like if I go through like a big move like that or something again, like don't really even see anybody at all for like a day or two. Just, yeah, hang out with the dog, chill, breathe, eat, clean myself up, just sleep a lot, do nothing. Because I didn't end up doing that until after all this happened, and now I feel great. So I think like this last week or so, you've maybe seen a little bit of a difference. I'm not sleeping the entire time. <laughs> the, the side door makes a little noise while I'm trying to sleep. So if you just close that quieter, that would be fantastic. I'll just go in and out the front. <laughs> I'll go in and out the front. I think you said that yeah. when I first came down here, as you said, we've been using the front door a lot too. I like so, the front. Yeah, I'll, tr I'll try and be more mindful of that. And sweep on the side here where all the... <laughs> <laughs> But, but we had we had some feedback from a, a listener in relation to kind of what you were saying. Okay. I'll say if you want to edit it out later, it's fine. We have a listener out in St. Louis, and her question regarding the woman in Moab was, why did she have to wait until he got there? That's been the question on everybody's mind. And I think that there isn't a great answer. And that has been one of the things that has bothered me the most is I've asked that question and said that, that probably wasn't the best way to do things. And that's been the crowd consensus. And yet I think all I was looking for was a little bit more of a, a accountability or an apology for that part, because I'm sitting here saying sorry for how I reacted and I haven't gotten any sort of apology for like forgetting my birthday, doing things like this, like, I didn't even get like a sorry, like this is going to be hard for, you know, you to hear or anything like that. Like, it's just, it was just like, this is what I'm going to do. And this is it. It is what it is. So suck it. Like, could you at least have a little bit of empathy for how you've made me feel? Mm -hmm. But then it's all just, you're 100% in control of your feelings. Well, like feelings don't just pop up out of nowhere. Right. To say that I shouldn't be angry. I mean, or, or hurt or upset is how 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 easy for them to say right they're not you they don't know you know but i mean just put yourself in that situation so this is where it all comes back to perception maybe i'm way more invested in the idea of this relationship than the other person maybe i was way more into it than they were right so i see this person as somebody that i could potentially spend the rest of my life with and they just see me as you know fuck around and find out my personal assessment is you caught fire two Moab trips ago and you wanted to keep injecting yourself with that feeling that Moab gave you that you wanted to just go out and obliterate rocks everywhere. You were just like, you saw rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like Phoenix is full of rocks. <laughs> and the thing is, is that Phoenix is actually full with lots of rocks, right? And then I think that's been my advice post woman of Moab is that, there's 5 million other rocks to, to blow your load on, right? And, and this feeling that you felt, that moment, you were peacocking like crazy. You had so much swag in your step. And you were hoping that this person could fulfill that feeling or keep that feeling going. And again, I, I thought you used it for motivation for other aspects of your life too. Because there's a lot of stuff that we need to do. We're going to start bringing in some top-notch guests to, to sit down with us and oh yeah it's this. definitely put me in a, a in a better place right and i mean this goes back to we're getting t-shirts <laughs> yeah well we described the the woman that motivated me to go on the road trip right yeah. so i mean but at some point i i don't want to have just constant bridges in life i'd like to have somebody that wants to be more constant Choose one of the five million out here. There's going to be some. Well, I tried and I got fucking burnt. All right. Is this on Tinder? Or no, what? I'm talking. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking that came no, out see, here. For, but That's Chandler, bro. Don't mess with Chandler broads. They'll break your heart every time. They got an alternative agenda. Every single one of them. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. Even if they're living there temporarily. <laughs> Jesus. Well. Shout out to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. <laughs> So this is this is life now. And I don't know where I move forward from from here. And I wish I could have an answer to that question. So to our listener in St. Louis, 
Why did she have to wait? Nobody knows. And I don't know if we'll ever have an answer. I'd like an answer too. And if I ever get one, if it's there's a reward, if, yeah. <laughs> there's a handsome reward. If it's uh, but a VCR, you get a VCR, <laughs> right? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to do the investigating for me and get the answer for me, great. We will reward you. And one hour of kennel time with Frank and Saki. <laughs> <laughs> you could actually sit in Frank's crate because it's so fucking massive. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There's plenty. You could have you could have your own half the bed. <laughs> I should probably just start sleeping in there. It's probably more, <laughs> more room there than in the bed. <laughs> well, you, you you get both of them too. They they freaking they know to go to you. Yeah, they <laughs> love dominating me. So, what else do we need to I review think, here? I think it is fun. That's good for now. Yeah. What about you? What about me? <laughs> Wait, how you perceive yourself? I'm retired. I have great shorts on. <laughs> no holes in I them. I have great taste in shorts. <laughs> Someone told me today a a former manager who hired me and sent me a private message saying that they were really glad they hired me. And I know that the work I do is meaningful and I know I have an impact. And it always comes back in the forms of compliments like that. So number one, Thank the people that help you get to where you are today. To my listeners out there, make sure you reach out to someone right now who's meaningful and purposeful in your life. Tell them thank you. Let them know that you care about them, that you love them, that you appreciate them. Everybody take a minute to do that. Number two, breathe. Everybody fucking breathe. And number three, do some good in the world. Make things better for everyone, you know, just. Be critical. It, it's, it shouldn't have to be a pull myself up by my bootstrap type of situation. It takes a village. We all know it takes a village. Let's help each other out. Help your community. Get involved locally. Do something. Smile for God's sakes. Be nice. Stop being a fucking dick. Love one another. Be excellent. <laughs> See, that's all I can do, man, is all I can do is push the positivity. And that's why I'm here. That's who I am. And even me, I get angry. I get so angry, world. I get so upset. I just want to take my ball and I want to go home. <laughs> Game's <laughs> over. <laughs> but just every day is different. Every day is a struggle. It just depends on what you want to choose that day so my decision the other day was to just let go of what was upsetting me and i was just going to choose to move forward for me that's how it is like it's i've gotten to the point where i can just basically like take something and after it culminates enough i can just be like all right it's gone bye now and and that's, I guess, why I don't get along with other people well in confrontational situations. Because for me, I would rather just get this awkwardness that's between us and this tension and this weirdness and just can we can we get it out of here? Can can we just can we get this out of here? This needs to go. This needs to go, and let's get back to conversing normally. And then we'll and then we'll take the necessary steps forward. But keep but while this tension's here, nothing productive is going to happen. Nothing. So you need to, at some point, make that choice. Like, I'm letting this all go. I'm just going to let this go. So you have to let go of that tension first. You don't have to let go of your your feelings or how the situation make you feel. But you need to let go of that, whatever's inhibiting communication. That's the breathing part. Yeah. That's so I feel like I've done that, at least. Finally. How do you release... Besides on rocks. <laughs> <laughs> what have been smoking? But, Besides belly buttons. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes I tuck it up into my waistband, almost coming my own belly button. <laughs> I'm so glad that we got to expose another person to super bad. So that was my positive contribution to the world this year. 
Uh, I said this year, <laughs> this week. It's honestly, it's one of the things I love most about her is I get those opportunities to be like, here, let me, let me, let me just, it's just this one. <laughs> yeah. First football game, first baseball game, a lot of firsts. I like being the first one. <laughs> and don't we all? <laughs> and that's a conversation that we've had on there before <laughs> everybody wants to be first they want to be the first one breaking news here <laughs> you heard it here first mm -hmm. it's all about being the first first man on the moon it's a big deal and so i don't want to leave anyone after this conversation feeling hopeless or that life has no meaning like I said, it's up to each individual how much they want to contribute to society or spin the wheel, so to speak. We didn't start the fire, right? It's always been burning since the world's been turning. So we decide how much we want to, how much gasoline we want to throw on that fire while we're here. But if we don't do it, somebody else is going to. That's my whole point. So you can be the first to do it if you want to. And people like being the first. Right. Who's on first? <laughs> so that's that's really just I wanted to make sure that I, I, I clarify that before before we ended this conversation, because I know what I said earlier with, with with life not having a purpose. It's just there's so many people in this world and there's so many different ideas. And, and how many times have you been like, oh, man, you have a great idea and you look and it's it's already been thought up. You know, it's it's somebody beat you to it. it. It it doesn't mean that your idea wasn't original and creative. It's just somebody else thought of it first, and somebody will continue to think of it first. It's just up to you if you want to be the first at something. Who's on first? <laughs> <laughs> great, great. <laughs> oh my god. All right. That <laughs> I always like to believe I was the first Middle Eastern student body president. That I'm pretty sure is a true thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I don't know. But I want to claim that I was first and I was proud of that first. And I was like, that's my monument. That's there's there's my Mount Rushmore. There Done. you go. Boom. <laughs> and I and I got the the idea that I should keep running. And the reality is if I had kept running in the neighborhood that I live in, I would have kept losing. <laughs> this is Northwest Peoria Glendale. Debbie Lesko is the current congressional representative. And it doesn't matter which Republican gets into the seat. Trent Franks was before her. They will continue to win. And it will never be questioned. It will never be challenged. It'll be overrun 60-40. The day that seat flips Democrat, wow, I'll be impressed. But these are the same people, though, that support this fake recall that recently came out. Cyber Ninjas report released that not only did Trump lose the election. He lost by more than we thought. He lost by more than we thought. And and so I hope the lies are over. I hope we're done with the shenanigans. <laughs> Can we just get back to being civil and not making shit up? Can we get back to, I get it, you disagree with abortion. I get it, you want smaller government. But let's be logical in our in our ideas. Let's not just tell, tell wild fairy tales. But I like fairy tales. Oh, boy, do they ever. <laughs> There's always a happy boy, ending, right? Boy, do they ever. <laughs> Boats you, of animals. and You meet you, you meet a woman in a, in a beautiful place. and you... So they're now thinking that people in this region, the Southwest, were as here as early as 23,000 years ago. And near the White Sands National Park in New Mexico, they've been, over, they've been able to discover layers. Embedded in those layers are footprints and various forms of plant life, seeds. And they've traced that, they've dated that to 23,000 years. Previously, we're at 13,000 years. Here in the Americas, specifically, that people crossed over the Bering Strait. And so now there's new evidence to suggest some other things are happening. And that's the thing. We keep learning. We have to keep wanting to learn. We have to keep discovering. And I'm okay with science. So I'll, I'll have a surgery. I'll take a vaccine. 
I'll also try to eat healthy because the best scientific evidence we have says stay off sugar. The best scientific evidence we have says don't eat too much bread. But I love bread. <laughs> <laughs> My mitochondria want those carbs. Best scientific evidence is eat avocados. Well, avocados can suck a dick. <laughs> I don't like how they taste. So what's your science to say about that? I leave scientists mentally scarred, triple extra large, wild like rock stars who smash guitars. <laughs> Perfect. To quote Gangstar. Above the clouds. <laughs> I think that's a great place to add it. It's actually not Gangstar. It's um, <laughs> <laughs> it's Inspector Deck. It's Inspector Deck. But it comes back to the blunts and East Coast hip hop, and a blunt every now and then isn't a bad thing. And i i enjoy I enjoy talking to you today. And just don't burn a hole in your shorts. Just, uh, just let's just keep the party. <laughs> <laughs> let's just keep the party going all well, the way to Cleveland. So I'm trying to do. So if you enjoy what you hear on this podcast, you may find us on Twitter at CTS Terry or at CTS Safe. You may find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts by listening for the Catch the Sky podcast. If you are interested in pre-ordering one of our No Pants Tuesday shirts, <laughs> please feel free to get in touch with us on any one of those social media platforms. Until next week, keep trying to catch the sky.